Hi, I'm Pastor Goodman. And this is the Lord's Weekend God's Life. Blessed all saints day to you. Rejoice that by the blood of the Lamb you sinners were washed and made holy ones, saints, united in him who has conquered death for you, in him who has knit together all chosen people across time and space, even heaven and earth, into one holy communion of the saints. We rejoice that we are the little holy ones of God, for he saved us and taught us to pray, lead us not into temptation. But the same God who has made sinners holy tempts no one. He's the good guy, remember? See, temptation doesn't come from God. When we pray, lead us not into temptation, we recognize where temptation comes from. It's temptation is of three kinds, namely of the flesh, of the world, and of the devil. Of the flesh, because, you see, the devil didn't make you do anything. You did that. You were the one that thought it seemed like a good idea at the time. You were the one that wanted to, and it was your hand that actually did it. We call this our old Adam, that corrupted, sinful nature that has been so thoroughly turned in on itself, not just that it does bad things, but that it likes it. Not just then that I am my own worst enemy. The real problem comes when I call myself right and good in the things that I do. That I call myself, even as I destroy everything I touch, good. I tell myself there is such a thing as a victimless crime, that it wouldn't actually hurt anybody else if I did it, so it's probably okay. That, that selfish human nature that would be so self-absorbed that it wouldn't even stop to look and see whether or not it hurts anybody else. That, that sinful nature that, that, would, that, that would hurt even myself and love it every moment. Temptation is of the world, and it's not just that other people are bad too. But it's that sin is collective, it's infectious, it builds, and it, it finds safety in numbers. And so that sin that I have that I think I can keep in this tiny little box never quite stays there. It always manages to spill out and hurt somebody else around me. And when they get hurt, they get mad and they hurt back. And so it just builds and it builds and it builds. Each time breaking something along the way, sin loves to destroy and destroy and destroy. And it finds safety in numbers and it tells ourselves that two wrongs somehow make a right. It, it is a hurt that just cascades over and over and over. Even in the midst of, of trying to find safety, the world is full of all kinds of pain and misery and other sinners. And we are convinced that since there are so many awful things here, we might as well go with the flow. Otherwise, we'll be completely overwhelmed by it. But this is not the case. And we recognize that temptation does come from the devil, from Satan whose name means accuser, who Jesus calls that great liar. And the thing is, we think that he somehow makes us do bad things, but I'm pretty sure he doesn't. I'm pretty sure we're more than willing to do them all by ourselves. And I'm pretty sure that he tells us the truth about the law. He accuses us with God's own words. These things that you did actually caused real pain. These things that you did cannot be fixed. These things that were done to you make you unclean and unloved. His lies, you see, they don't involve the law nearly as much as they do the gospel. Satan would have us think there is no help for sinners. Luther says he would lead us to despise the word and works of God. That he would have us disregard that promise made to us in the scriptures that God has shed his blood for you, a sinner. That the baptism which has been poured over onto you actually does cleanse you daily and richly from all your sin and even the sins done to you. He would have us disregard even the resurrection of Jesus that names us as saints this day. Instead, Satan would have us hide in bushes like Adam and Eve or build towers named Babel, cloaked in all kinds of false security and misbelief that we can somehow make things better all on our own. And before it seems just a little bit too symbolic, ask yourself how many addicts think they're doing just great while they're high, even if they happen to be laying in the alley at the time. And so God would teach us to pray. Lead us not into temptation. God tempts no one. But we pray that God would guard and keep us from the devil, protect us from the world, and protect us even from ourselves. Point us ever, O oh Lord, to the rescue from temptation, from Jesus, who has rescued us by giving himself into it, that he would bear our sin, and he would bear our, the, our punishment, and he would even bear our death, that we would have his life. 